Hello, welcome to my channel. My name is Bridget. I'm a nurse practitioner and a nurse educator. In today's video, I'll be going over five NCLEX questions on ear, nose, and throat, also known as ENT, courtesy of nursing.com. Nursing.com is an excellent resource if you are in nursing school. They have courses, cheat sheets, practice questions, study plans, sim clocks, they have videos, and their courses and videos can guide you through nursing school so that you can consolidate studying and focus on what you really need to know. If you want to learn more about uh, nursing.com, check out my affiliate link below. A client has been diagnosed with Meniere's disease. What is a priority nursing intervention? Meniere's disease is a disorder of the inner ear, have a lot of vertigo and hearing loss. A high salt diet can make it worse. I'm going to go with anti-vertigo because if a lot of decongestants raise blood pressure. The priority nursing intervention is to provide anti-vertigo medication because vertigo can be severe and cause nausea and vomiting. A client is having epistaxis. This is a nosebleed. How should the nurse instruct the client to position themselves? leaned forward. Back in the day when people would have nosebleeds, even my parents, they would tell me to tilt your head back, but the head should not be tipped backwards because the blood will run down the, the back of the pharynx and the client could aspirate blood. The nurse is caring for a client who is evaluated for sensor, sensory neural hearing loss. Which of the following assessment findings would the nurse expect to observe in this client select all that apply? Sensory neural, air conduction, Oh, this was often tested on in my NP program. Air conduction is heard longer than bone conduction. This is a trick question in the unaffected ear. So no, the affected ear would show air conduction is heard longer than bone conduction. They're going to have normal appearance of the external ear canal. In conductive hearing loss, you might see, for example, earwax, ear cerumen impaction, air conduction greater than bone conduction bilaterally during the Renee test. I don't know why they love testing on Weber and Renee. I've never seen a doctor pull out their tuning fork. If the defective ear hears the Weber tuning fork louder, the finding indicates a conductive hearing loss. Sensory neural loss will cause the sound to be heard best in the normal ear. Yeah, I found this question to be difficult, so this is very tricky because they didn't specify if this patient was having sensory neural hearing loss on both sides and kind of the answers contradicted themselves because this one is bilaterally, but this would kind of indicate that both sides have had hearing loss. And then this one, it says lateralization. So it's like, which is, is it bilateral or lateral to one unaffected ear? But anyways, basically it was like, what are the true statements? And when someone has sensory neural hearing loss, lateralization to the unaffected ear during the Weber. So the findings associated with sensory neural hearing loss, sensory neural hearing loss occurs when there's a problem occurring in either the inner ear or the auditory nerve, which is delivers sound to the brain. And air conduction is greater than bone conduction during the Rene, or I don't know, you know, people say things differently, Rin, Rene. Basically, if someone has, and I'll put, I'll do my best to find pictures of what this means, but a vibrating tuning fork is placed on the patient's mastoid. And when he stops hearing it, it is brought to outside of the ear. And if he still hears it, air conduction is, is greater than bone conduction. And it's seen in normal persons or those having sensory neural deafness. An older client has macular degeneration. The following activities are activities. The following are activities the client may have difficulty with due to macular degeneration. Select all that apply. Definitely all of this, except combing hair. You can comb hair without being able to see. The loss, the loss of central vision doesn't impact the ability of a person to comb hair. However, it may affect a person's ability to see in the mirror to style. Macular degeneration, I'll do my best to put a picture of what it's like for them to have it. If patients have macular degeneration and they're driving, you'll often see them hug the edges of the lane because they see in the periphery, not the central part of their eyes. Technically, they really shouldn't be driving. It's very dangerous, but that's what happens when they don't, when we only have one driving test when we're 15 or 16. So driving a vehicle with the loss of central vision, this activity requires more effort than prior to vision loss. Reading a favorite book, again, you can't read a book without central vision. And walking on unlevel ground, again, would be very difficult without central vision and cooking meals would also be very difficult. The nurse is providing education to a client about Meniere's disease. Which of the following education topics should the nurse include? 
move head slowly. This can help prevent worsening of vertigo. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure that you hit that like button and you smash that subscribe button. I currently have a goal of hitting 30,000 subscribers. I've been at this for three years and um, still haven't reached it. <laughs> Um, so it would mean a lot if you subscribed and keep in mind that it doesn't cost you anything to subscribe and you can always unsubscribe later until next time.